We know that every morning the sun rises and the sun sets. However, we also know that every single day the sun rises and sunset, it changes time of each of those. It's either a little bit later in the day or a little bit earlier in the day, depending on the season. That is the whole concept of video number two, which is, in my opinion, the second biggest mistake new and experienced vegetable gardeners and growers do and make when they set up their gardens, move into a new place, or just want to start something new. That is location. Get the location wrong and you're doomed. That's what this video is about. There are going to be three main concepts that I'm going to be discussing under the branch of location, which hopefully at the end of it, you will never be making this mistake ever again. If this is the first time you are here, welcome. It's a place where I discuss everything, sustainable living within an urban environment, growing your own food in an urban environment where we don't have acres and hectares of land to be able to ultimately grow healthier food to become more self-sustainable with what we do. My name is Craig and I started this journey about four years ago documenting absolutely everything and over the years I've got a loyal base of followers so for those of you that come back time and time again thank you thank you thank you and if this is the first time welcome I hope you enjoy the content and I hope you enjoy the tips and advice that I have to share. The first thing we want to look at which is the thing that gets so many gardeners is the seasonal arc and movement of the sun. This impacts everything that you do and it impacts us in so many different ways. Because of the seasonal change of the arc where you might be getting perfect sun in summer, you're getting complete shade in winter. And I have that example with one of my pear trees where in summer it is just from morning to evening full sun. In winter, the sun does not touch it, but it's okay because it's, it goes into dormancy. And then when the springtime comes along, it's a little bit slower of waking up, but it wakes up nonetheless and then there's some sun. I would never put that tree in that per place permanently. It is in a pot, so I can move it around. But these are the considerations you need to be giving. If you have rows, raised beds that you want to put next to your house, have a look at the orientation of your bed in relation to your house, then in relation to the seasonal arc movement. Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere is different, so make sure that you know your seasonal arc change depending on the, the hemisphere that you are in and know that in summer you should not be planning where you put your beds. If anything use winter as the time to plan out your garden because this is where you are going to get probably the worst effect of the sun's arc on your garden with the least amount of sun exposure then use something like an app there are so many mobile apps that are pretty cool you can just download them hold your phone up and turn turn and you can actually see where the sun's arc is in relation to your current position. That's why I said, if you can plan your garden in winter so that you get worst case scenario, and then use an app to see, does the sun move overhead, which it probably would. Um, and then what are the next two things I'm gonna be discussing? What are their effects on that arc movement? So the single most important thing you need to remember if you want to avoid failure in your vegetable gardening is the seasonal arc changes in the sun. Then the second biggest thing that affects people when it comes to location is, can you guess? Trees. <laughs> this is something that I can't count the number of times has burned people. Why? 
because when you plan your vegetable garden you have so much excitement and you think I'm gonna plant a tree over there I'm gonna plant one there I'm gonna plant one there I'm gonna put fruit trees in between my vegetable garden I'm gonna create this beautiful interactive food forest vegetable gardening experience and then a few years later those little fruit trees that grabbed your inspiration grabbed your tickled your fancy have now turned into trees and suddenly half your beds are no longer usable. This happens all the time. One of the biggest things you need to consider when planting a tree is what its five to seven year size is going to be like. You could end up in a position where you plant a tree with full intention of doing good, but every season you will find production starts decreasing as your tree starts getting bigger and bigger, starts casting more shade. Then we look at things like, is it a deciduous tree or an evergreen tree? In evergreen trees, you're gonna have an even bigger effect because the winter arc is gonna cast even more shade on your vegetable garden. If it's deciduous, you'll be okay. So understanding the size of your trees when you plant them is a very big thing. Then you need to look at the orientation. And that is why it is always so important when you buy a new land, when you move into a new house, when you have a new vegetable patch, to understand the seasonal changes because that is going to determine where you put your trees. As an example, if you don't yet know, I bought a piece of land in a little Karoo and I'm turning it into a self-sufficient homestead. The name is Tamako Homestead. I will put a link in the description below if you want to follow that awesome journey as I transition from urban into rural and I haven't done much on that land for almost a year because I wanted to experience the full range of seasons and now I know if I want to plant a tree higher up on the property because it is sloped the sun's arc moves that way with the slope so if I plant trees higher up on the slope they are going to cast shade all the way down because I'm on a slope the shade is going to travel even further. Now I know if I want to plant big trees like pine trees, waterberries, acacias, I need to plant them further down so that the, the shade that they cast is further down the property with most of my growing happening on the top end. I will have some interper interspersed trees to obviously give us some shade and feed like this one right next to me, which is a kirbum. I'm going to be putting lots of them on. And then this beauty over here, which is a waterberry, which has edible berries, but it's mainly for the bees and the birds. They are going to be spread around the property, but my big structural trees are going to be further down the slope because I now know the arc of the sun, the casting of the shadows, and what a full mature sized tree, the effect it's going to have on the land. So knowing where to plant your tree, the orientation based on your position and the shadows cast is the, one of the things you seriously need to take into account. Then the last thing, which is something very simple, very basic, but we all get it wrong at some point in our vegetable growing careers. That is buildings and structures. It's so easy to have a look at your back garden and say, Ah, oh, this is such a great piece of land. This is not such a nice little space. Let me put in some rows, let me put in some raised beds. There's no trees around me, there's nothing that's going to impact um, the sun's arc and BAM! You get hit with winter shade. And this happens all the time. As the arc changes, the shadows from your house outbuildings cast over your land make a big difference to what you can grow nearby. If you have a double story building for instance or a very high pitched roof that's going to have an even bigger effect on the outcome of shade that is cast from your buildings through the changes of the, the sun's arc over the seasons. So once again as per point number four my advice would be do this in winter because the winter arc is the worst then use an app to determine the summer arc. Inevitably, the arc is going to get better because it's gonna go more above your head as the winter arc arcs down. 
So knowing where you're building casts shade in the winter is going to ultimately set you up for the greatest success because you'll get only more sun in the summer times. So if you follow these three principles and you take your location seriously and you understand the effects of the sun's arc, trees and other shrubs and you look at buildings and structures and you know how those interact with shade, rain, water, all of those things, then you are one step further to succeeding in your vegetable growing career and getting all of those abundant harvests that I know you are looking for. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my sustainability journey where I'll be continuing to share a whole bunch of ideas, tr tips, tricks. This is video two of ten, so there's still another eight awesome videos coming out in this how to grow your own vegetables at home series. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy homesteading.